Hey folks, welcome to Most Excellent Way um, on Facebook Live. We're um, thankful to be here, thankful to have another time of gathering to get into God's Word and um, to hear about what God has to say in regards to living a life outside of um, addiction and being set free from that. So I'm going to have my husband go ahead and open us up in a word of prayer. Yeah, Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, the opportunity to come together to get into your word, as my wife was just saying. Uh, Lord, thank you that uh, we're all getting ready to, to celebrate uh, the 4th of July, mm -hmm. uh, independence, uh, freedom. So Lord, as we, even as we talk about freedom from addiction this evening, Lord, thank you for the freedom to be able to proclaim your word, yes. to be able to do this. Um, Facebook Live, Lord, we're thankful for the men and women that uh, have laid down their life for this freedom that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you, God, for the for the fact that you laid down your life on the cross so that we could have freedom, so that we could be reconciled. And this evening as we talk about reconciliation, Lord, may we not uh, ever forget the fact that reconciliation is only possible in and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. So we're so thankful for that, Lord. Uh, again, just bless this evening. Thank you for this time. Uh, just super thankful that my wife and I are able to be here to do this this, this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah, so we're super thankful to be able to do this. Uh, we're thankful to be able to gather together with you guys uh, for the Most Excellent Way Live. And so every time we get together, we talk about four reasons why uh, the Most Excellent Way is a safe group. And uh, the most important reason is because we're going to get into the Word of God. Again, we always say it's not going to be you know, my opinion or my wife's opinion or Matt Macera, Pastor Matt, Stephen and Leslie, uh, Caleb and, and his wife. It doesn't matter who it is that's leading on the live or even in person. Uh, it's getting into the word of God that matters because it's the word of God. It's his word that will never come back void. It's his word that penetrates our hearts and minds. It's his word that we have to do business with in order to live life a different way. Um, so that's the number one reason why, well, one of four, I think it's the number one reason, uh, to get into God's word. Uh, another reason is that we say that this is a safe place is because, uh, we all get it. Um, we all come from it. We all understand. Although, uh, what I struggled with in addiction is astronomically different than somebody else's struggle in addiction, uh, because none of our struggles are the same. But what we do have is the commonality to understand that we struggled and apart from Christ, we were bound to uh, continue to struggle. But in Christ, we have a freedom. So we all get it. Um, we've all come from it. Yep. So everybody that's serving on staff, you know, we all understand. And we've been walking in victory over addiction for at least one year uh, as lives are being watched by mm -hmm. um, our pastor, by other leadership. Um, and then as the church leadership comes together to make a decision, as Pastor Matt saying, hey, been watching so-and-so's life and you know they you know line up with with Timothy and what it says there to be a leader um, and then the decision is made to for somebody to you know start coming on staff and so there's two of the reasons why we say this is a safe group and my wife will tell you the other two yeah and you know we do say this every single we whoever is sitting here on the Facebook live or whoever's leading over there at the church on the men's side the the women's side um, and it's not a matter of just being in this routine of saying these things just because, um, you know, but we want to make sure that those that are showing up for the first time and those of us that have continued to keep showing up, um, you know, to know that it truly is a safe place. Coming from a life of addiction and serving self, um, I, you know, found myself in many unsafe situations. And um, so it's a good, like, I like to be reminded why even I myself here am safe. And so two more reasons why it's a safe place. Um, the third reason is that we say this number here I laugh at because I know it's so many more than a thousand, I don't laugh in a bad way, but um, I know that it's so many more than a thousand people, but at least a thousand people and then some are praying mm -hmm. for most excellent way. Um, you know, I know we have even here on Facebook Live a faithful attender, Pastor John, I think his name is, from uh, Pakistan, I believe. And, um, you know, we've been able to go alongside, uh, you know, with Matt and his wife, Matt Masera and his wife, Anna, and others to um, other countries to plant Most Excellent Way Ministries within those countries. And so 
that I say that to say there's so many folks praying and the word of God says that the prayer of a righteous man the prayer of a believer does a lot of good work availeth much it says and so knowing that um, prayers are heard by the Lord and what are people praying for people are praying that folks will sh show up um, get saved come to place uh, have a personal relationship with Christ and um, place their belief in the gospel and then become the one sent and so going out to disciple and winning others other over for the kingdom of God and so um, that's what the prayer is for and God is faithful to answer those prayers people um, continue to show up and they do continue to get saved and they continue to go out into the, the dark world to um, shine his perfect light and then the fourth reason why we say it's a safe place, place here, excuse me, is that uh, what's said here stays here. Now, of course, we always say with Facebook Live, if you type messages up on there, you know, that you've been clean and sober for X amount of months or um, whatever you say, it's there. People are going to see it. However, if you show up, um, well, if you send us a messenger message, that's going to be kept private and confidential. Um, if you show up um, in person to any of the most excellent ways, what, what you say is not going to be shared elsewhere. You know, we've been doing this group for coming up on uh, around 12 years now. And, uh, you, you know, what, not one time have we had a, a circumstance where somebody has shared their heart and it's been shared outside of um, those from those staff and those leaders. And so just knowing that it's it's okay to show up and truly share how you're doing um, makes it a safe place. Yeah. So cool. Uh, yeah, Jack is welcome, watching Jack. from Sierra Leone, West Africa. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, my wife was saying, we've been able to plant the most excellent way in different countries around the world. And it's been a lot of fun uh, to see the word of God go forth and you know, know that um, God desires to set the captive free. His word says so. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's really cool uh, to be able to do what we do. Um, so my wife's going to read the opening statement. Um, when the Most Excellent Way was founded in, in 1986, um, as the founders were like involved in other things, trying to figure out like what it looks like to live life outside and away from addiction, they started coming up with you know the most excellent way and they came up with the 10 attitudes of victorious living and so they put together this opening statement that really describes what it is that the most excellent way the desire for the most excellent way and what it's about so the most excellent way it says here is love according to first corinthians 12 31 and 13 3 through 8. the most excellent way is a loving group of men and women affected directly or indirectly by drugs, alcohol, or other life-dominating sin. Here at Most Excellent Way, we utilize biblical principles to overcome the guilt, frustration, hopelessness, fear, and shame associated with addictive behavior. Remembering the admonition of the scriptures, and this is out of Colossians 2, 8, that says, be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on the human tradition based on the elements of the world rather than Christ. We believe a, a person can become totally free from addiction and compulsive behavior only by the power of the indwelling spirit of Christ Jesus. The most excellent way is to be reconciled to God, the Father, through belief in Jesus Christ. We believe that through meetings such as this, we will grow in our faith in Christ. We will become healthy, joy-filled, and productive children of God with the support of others who understand, remember we said it's safe here because we get it, who understand what we have lived through and by applying biblical principles to our lives. We gain a better understanding of the sin nature and how to change our attitudes and behavior. And the most excellent way is a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, a thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Doesn't that sound like addiction? I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Amen. Great point. That's exactly what addiction sounds like. Because it does those things. It absolutely robbed me of everything. Me too. So now we're going to get into the 10 attitudes of victorious living. Um, as we read through these at the top, it says, it says this, Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, I, I like to say a lot 
when talking about Philippians 2.5, you know, this is what we want is our mindset to change. I don't want no longer to think the way that Josh thinks, but to think yeah. the way that Christ does. And the only way that we can do that is by getting into the Word of God. Because what is it that Christ says? What is it that God has to say? How does Scripture lay out different scenarios and, and give us different advice on, on how we're supposed to live, right? Who we place ourselves around and what we what we dwell in is what is going to be the way that our thought process, our actions, mm -hmm. all of those things, right? If we're focused and fixed on the things of this world, that's where our thought process is. Sure. But when we're living by means of the spirit, we're living by means of the spirit because we're in the word of God. And so we're looking to God's word as how we're supposed to be. And so that thought process, I want Christ's thinking, not Amen. Josh's thinking. Amen. So attitude number one is humility. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. I admit I am powerless over the effects of drugs, alcohol, and self-centered behavior. My life is unmanageable. Number two is repentance. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. I believe Jesus Christ can and will create in me a new way of life. Number three is submissive. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew 5, 5. I give my will and my life to Jesus Christ. Number four is honesty. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. I honestly examine myself in light of God's word. Number five is merciful. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. I humbly ask God's forgiveness for my sinful past. I am able to forgive those who have hurt me. And then we go on with uh, number six, obedient, where Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Matthew 5, 8. I desire to live under the guidance of God's Holy Spirit day by day. Reconciliation is number seven, where Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. Number eight goes on with uh, faith. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.10. I trust in the power of Jesus Christ when I face hardship and trials. Perseverance is number nine, where Jesus said, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Matthew 5, 11 through 12. I stand firm in my faith that Jesus is in control of all things. And then number 10 is loving servant, where Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. As a new creation in Christ, I share with others the good news of a risen Savior who makes his people whole. You know, we, we uh, always talk about, you know, in 30 seconds or less um, it, when we're here. And the reason why we say that in the live, yeah. in person is because there's a whole bunch of people and we want to be able to get through the evening. Um, but we talk about like, hey, what, what is it that you're seeing as we read through this, you know? And as my wife was reading number nine, Perseverance, blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. You know, as she was reading through that, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's only we talk about that this is a spirit led life, mm -hmm. right? And these attitudes are, it, this is a spirit led thing, right? We're not gonna be able to do this and muster this up on our own. And as we say those things, for me, number nine perseverance is, it proves that it's only by means of the spirit of God living in me that I'm able to produce this. Because left to me, uh, you start saying evil things about me and to me, uh, it's gonna invoke a different response. Mm. Uh, but Christ living in me is what allows me to, you know, like not want to reach out and touch someone in response to somebody saying something stupid, right? And so for me, it's the simple things that like prove that it's it's a spirit-led thing, right? Mm -hmm. That we respond and act different uh, in situations today. So I think this week, 
Uh, number nine's perseverance um, really kind of stood out to me. And it stood out to me that way for the first time. And we've been doing this um, literally for almost 12 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Truth. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew he was going to look at me and want, want to know what I saw. Um, so I was prepared this time. Um, so what stuck out to me truly was number four. And that great promise from Christ, these are all promises from him out of the, out of the words of, out of Christ's mouth. He spoke these words. And um, the promise of uh, being filled um, and blessed um, as I hunger and thirst for what? For righteousness. So not for more of self and not for the things of this world, but thirsting for righteousness. And so, you know, I'm showing up here and I'm saying, God, you are good. And I want more of you and I want to understand more about you and I want to reflect uh, to this world you uh, those are things of righteousness and uh, he's gonna he's gonna answer those those desires those as I'm hungering and thirsting for that I'm no longer hungering and thirsting for uh, the poker machine or the drugs and alcohol or the destructive um, toxic relationships or the shopping right I am hungering and thirsting for him and he promises that he will fill me um, knowing that he's already in me my husband said spirit-led attitudes the holy spirit as we place our faith in christ when we when we believe in the gospel for salvation we get the indwelling of the holy spirit which is a promise of our inheritance and it's a seal um, and so he's already in us he's already in me and as i desire more of him he gives me that um, and so i just that's what sticks out uh, to me and that involves me being honest about the desire me needing him um, first right yeah and so uh, Jack if you want to send uh, a private message to the most excellent way we can get you set up with that information yep. simple and easy absolutely um, you know so as we flip this card over um, for those of you that have it or if it's been put up here electronically um, Matthew 6.33 says this, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew 6.33. Mm -hmm. It's a promise, folks. If we will live in light of, of seeking Christ first, God takes care of the rest. Right? And it's, it's about having our mindset fixed and focused on him in the midst of all things. You know, I like to, to be reminded often that when I take my eyes off of Christ and I start trying to figure out, okay, like I'm going to get this done. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to fix this. Right. Like everything goes, everything just goes bad real fast. Yeah. Um, but when I keep my eyes fixed and focused on Christ and, and live my, my life with my eyes focused on him, it's not saying that I don't have a part to do in, in it. But it goes the right way because God is involved, not Josh, right? And so I, I love that scripture. And it's a, a scripture that, well, 12 years ago, Pastor Matt took me to this portion of scripture and asked me if I was going to trust God with the outcome of my kids or was I going to trust me mm. with what was going on. And I trusted God, and it worked out fantastic. Do um, you want to read Titus? Yeah, so Titus 3, 3 through 8 um, says, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration, new birth, and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So we have a challenge out there that if you can memorize this and say it to one of the staff, uh, you get a $25 gift card to the Best Little Roadhouse, uh, which is hands down still has the best chicken Caesar salad 
so far in the world. We we've been going we've been going places, folks, and we are on the hunt for the best chicken Caesar salad and and it's still best little roadhouse and we are not being paid to say this. Yes. Um so there is that twenty five dollar gift certificate. We have people that faithfully give, donate to that, um, because why they they're excited about what's going on with Most Excellent Way, and want folks to continue to grow. And we grow by getting into the Word of God. And um, the Word of God is described in um, Ephesians six as the sword of the Spirit. It's the only offensive weapon we have against this world, against our own stinking thinking, mm-hmm. um, against the lies of the enemy. And so being able to to memorize God's word um, you know I mean we have electronics we have our phones you can download a Bible app and have it readily available you can even find it through Google um, and the written word you know in, in, in our Bibles as well however there's nothing like you know having God's word memorized the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance the, the words of, of Christ and mm-hmm. so um, that's the encouragement. There's that tangible takeaway of a, a nice night out to eat dinner at the best little roadhouse. Um, however, that's, there's that eternal takeaway, um, which is really the point of hiding God's word in your heart and having those um, powerful, powerful promises memorized in, in your heart and mind. And so we also ask the folks, you know, ladies on the one side, guys on the other, 30 seconds or less, let us know what, what do you see in Titus 3 through, through, through 8. Um, I always tongue twister that. Um, what's sticking out to you? And so, I, you know, I'll just kick this off. And I would say that what's sticking out to me tonight is um, being justified. And I know I've shared on that more than, more than once or twice, but to be justified, to be made right, Um, It's God that does it through Christ's blood. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is what justifies me. Um, And so no longer am I trying really hard to be a good person. Um, No longer uh, am I trying really hard to um, please my husband or be a good employee or not use drugs or, or not drink. You know, it's no longer those things that make me right, but it's God that makes me right. He has justified me through Christ. And so, um, and it's according to his grace. So it's a free gift. The best of my best can't make it happen. Um, And also there's nothing that I can do to earn it. Nothing I can do to earn it. Right. And so um, just because of God's heart for his world that he created, that he loves us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross. Um, uh, that's powerful to me. And so that's what's sticking out tonight. I love it. For me, it's the right there in the beginning. So as Paul is writing this to Titus, uh, he says, for we ourselves were also once, you know, it, I think sometimes people get caught up in who God has them today and they forget about who they were and what God rescued them from. So I like the way, because this is written to believers, right? As Paul's writing this to Titus. Uh, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, envy hateful and hating one another, right? So I, I love it because of the fact that it, it kind of kicks you off your high horse, right? And it's like a great reminder. And I don't ever want to forget uh, where I come from and where God rescued me from because it's a, it's a great reminder of how good God is and how powerful he is. So as I'm working with other men and talking to them about about Jesus and they're talking about desperation, right? Or they're feeling like they have no hope, right? Mm -hmm. I I get to not forgetting where I come from makes it a great reminder in the present of how good God is, right? Um, And so I that's what stood out to me um, this evening as we were reading. so now we would introduce ourselves. Yeah. So my name is Carly Lair, and um, I am uh, sold out for Jesus Christ. And it just blows me away that that's who I am today, that I get to say those things. Um, I was destined um, to die um, living the life that I lived, and I was getting there. Um, having medical maladies and um, abscesses of limbs and almost losing legs and um, you know just I mean seriously like 
physical death was in my future and the Lord rescued me um, out, of a, out of a hospital bed, as a matter of fact, after just being um, arrested by Marion County Sheriff's for violation of a restraining order, all in relation to my divorce. And, um, you know, that's where Christ met me. And I was a hot mess. Um, I mean, really, I couldn't speak a straight sentence. And um, I was pretty sure that I was forever going to be walking the streets with a backpack on my back. Um, which served as a pillow too, you know, um, and so, and that was my security system because if I laid my head down on it, nobody could get into it. Um, you know, that's the life I lived before uh, coming to know Christ, and you know, um, who I get to be today is is just an honor and it's a blessing, and uh, and so I'm just here in service to the Lord um, to show Him my my gratitude for what He's done in my life. And to also not just have it be about me, but then to be others focused and to um, point other women towards Jesus Christ as the answer. Uh, it doesn't matter what the problem is. Jesus Christ is the answer. And so um, I just I'm here because uh, the Lord has placed me here and I'm thankful. Yeah. Wow. So uh, my name's Josh and I. Man, I came so let's see uh, actually yesterday celebrated 12 years of wow. being out of prison totally forgot about that yeah. so right the second um yeah so i came here just over a little bit over 12 years ago um to the most excellent way fresh out of the penitentiary um i'd gotten saved in prison uh after a huge riot and um i gave my life to the lord and God has astronomically continued to every day uh, transform my life, to be more like him, to be used for him, so that my desires are no longer about self-serving, self-seeking, self-pleasing, but to seek after Christ and what his word says so that I love my wife right, I love our kids, I serve our community, I serve others, I come alongside men, and point them towards the same Jesus that continues to rescue me every single day from a life of corruption and chaos and destruction. Um, and I love people today because of what Christ has done in my heart. Uh, you know, my little sister is on here uh, this evening. Um, that would not be without uh, Christ. Absolutely would not be, you know. and. It's a great segue into the fact that tonight we're talking about reconciliation and what that looks like, um, which is pretty cool. And so that's why I'm here, you know, uh, drugs and alcohol astronomically just completely destroyed my life. As my wife said, it destroyed hers, but it also destroyed the lives of uh, so many people that loved me and were around me, you know, my siblings, my mom, my dad, uh, all of those things that came with uh, living the life that I chose to live. Um, but my life does not look like that today. And so I'm super thankful. I'm thankful that I get to be here doing this with my wife. Uh, we are definitely adjunct miracles uh, and only here because of God's grace and his power. Um, so then we jump into after introductions, we like to jump into our milestones of um, victory. So, you know, celebrating and giving God the glory. The book of James says that every good and perfect thing comes down from the Father above. And so showing up for the first time to most excellent way, we would give you a welcome key tag. And that's a good thing. So we're saying, hey, that's a good thing. Oh, that came from the Lord. Um, and, and ultimately, it's a form of worship as we're honoring him. And so on the back, it does say we love you because he first loved us. And it has our little most excellent way love symbol there. Um, and then we celebrate, you know, anybody celebrating 30 days. And if you're celebrating any time, yep. please put it up there. Type it in the thing. Let yeah. us celebrate with you. Give glory to God. And 60 days. And we've got a key tag for 90 days. Um, six months nine months and then we have one year um, and that's all that we have however um, as you continue to show up and celebrate and give god the glory when you get to two years we will custom make you a unique one of a kind with sharpie times two to make it a two-year key tag 
Um, and so, yeah, like my husband said, if you are celebrating any of those milestones of victory, we would love, if you're comfortable with putting it in the, in the chat, we would love to um, celebrate that with you. And even if you're um, watching this at a later time and not during the live, please share. We'd love to just give glory to the Lord for that. And then many of us aren't celebrating a milestone of victory, but we can then talk about what are you thankful for? Um, what's a good thing in your life today, um, big or small, that uh, you're thankful for? And, you know, I, I will start with saying I'm just so thankful, you know, as, as I shared about being arrested in a hospital bed. That's pretty embarrassing. That's like low of the low. Um, and, you know, about to lose a leg, a, a lower limb. Um, didn't. I have two legs, all of them. <laughs> Um, but very close and uh, my husband sharing about being in, imprisoned um, at Oregon State Penitentiary and being in a riot those are not good things those are really hard situations but those situations was like the catapult foundation of like new life in Christ that's where God got a hold of each one of our hearts and so I'm so thankful that God meets us in our mess mm -hmm. and so I don't know you know whoever's showing up now or later watching this video what your life looks like today um, you're showing up for a reason right and so we'll assume that you have experienced addiction in one way or another so um, you know, just hearing and knowing that God uses um, every yucky, dark thing I've ever done um, for his glory today. I had to place my faith in Christ first, but after that, um, you know, he continues to show up in my life. Um, he never leaves me, never forgets about me, and um, all these things that I know to be true about him, I'm just so thankful for. And just that reminder that it all started with a really hard situation that I would never have asked for in my life and same with my husband yet look what it's done for us and so I'm just thankful for who God is yeah I'm uh, super thankful you know that uh, God is who he is and that he does reach into people's lives no matter where you're at no matter where you're at in the world um, he reaches into each person's life and rescues uh, that person at the exact right time in, in God's timing, which is perfect. You know, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. <clears throat> I'm also thankful that because of God doing so, um, you know, like I said, you know, my little sister's on here and participating, uh, you know, and even responded with, I love you both so much. Uh, I love you too, Jake. You know, um, this morning was able to call her, and I hope my mom's not on here because sometimes she gets on here too. Uh, and the only reason why I hope she's not on here is because, you know, this morning I was able to get on the phone with my little sister and and uh, schedule a, a, a flight, you know, and make sure that my little sister could pick us up from the airport. Um, if you guys only knew, um, mm -hmm. that was not a thing. My sister and I didn't talk for almost a decade, you know, um, and that's because I can't blame her. I wouldn't want to talk to me either, um, you know, but God has restored so much, you know, and now I have an amazing brother-in-law, you know, her husband, I have my nieces and nephew, you know, there's like so many things that, that I have today because I surrendered my life to Christ and, and God did a work in not only my life, in my heart, but my family's to, to bring us together, uh, to be reconciled and restored. And it's, it's so cool. And, you know, and I also, you know, know that that's not necessarily gonna be a part of everybody's story, right? Uh, but right. I am thankful for it being a part of mine. Um, so I'm super thankful for that. You know, I'm thankful for all of you that are showing up, you know, all the way from Africa, you know, Liberia, West Africa, you know, uh, to right here in Salem, Oregon, you know, in so. Florida, I think Bart's from Florida, so. Yeah, so we have like. Lena's here tonight, Lena. Kila, she's down south now, like Medford, Roseburg, somewhere, she's down yeah, south. So we so. have, a, Lena, our, our Salem, holding it down for Salem. Igbal, uh, welcome. We're glad you're here tonight. We did kind of forget to say welcome to everybody. So, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, so we're super thankful that you guys are all participating and joining. And those that are going to participate and watch later, or yep, you welcome. know, somebody's going to share this and somebody's going to watch it, whatever that looks like, you know. Um, yeah, we're just thankful. Yep. Super thankful. So, tonight we're going to get into, and as I was talking about, you know, reconciliation with my family. Um, that's tonight's attitude of victorious living is reconciliation. 
Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, Matthew 5, 9. I ask forgiveness from all those I have hurt or dealt with unfairly. You know, me taking the responsibility for my actions and going to my family, to my sister, to my mom, to my dad, um, and asking for forgiveness, you know, and um, when I asked for forgiveness for my dad, the response that I got was not cool, and I, I, I can't blame him, because uh, even in that, that worked out great, you know, but um, I created a lot of hurt, and I needed to be willing to accept my dad's frustration and being upset with what I had done, you know, in and out of prison, you know, in and out of jails, strung out, right? Like all of the things that I did. Um, and so coming to him and saying, hey, will you forgive me? Um, he wasn't ready at the time. You know, I needed to live a life that showed that I was serious because I had said I'm sorry and you know a million times and it was not real um, but I needed to show and and by God's grace it worked out great and you know my my dad's been to a couple of my college graduations he's come up for our kids graduations and you know we got to go down there and you know I got to be there with my little sister and the rest of my siblings and my wife and you know, my sister and I held my dad's hand as, as he took his last breath and went to be with Jesus. And it's because we were reconciled. Mm. You know, our, our relationship was made right. right. Um, and that's what God desires for us as his children is to be reconciled, to be made right with him once and for all. And that's only possible in and through belief in Jesus Christ, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how reconciliation, according to scripture, takes place. So this evening, as we get into God's word, we're going to start off in Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. And I'll read it. It says this. It says, God has chosen you and made you his holy people. He loves you. So your new life should, look, should be like this. Show mercy to others. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. Together with these things, the most important part of your new life is to love each other. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. It is for peace that you were chosen to be together in one body. And always be thankful. Let the teaching of Christ live inside you richly. Use all wisdom to teach and counsel each other. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Everything you say and everything you do should be done for Jesus your Lord. And in all you do, give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. So for me, when we were sharing in staff time, some of the things that stood out to me is, is when you start looking at reconciliation, as I was just sharing a little bit ago, in verse 12, it starts off with God has chosen you. Right, that reconciliation component just goes to prove again that as you go into verse 14, halfway it says, love is what holds everything together. God's love for us, he has chosen you to be reconciled to him, mm. right? So there, there's a lot of power. There's a lot of absolutes, a lot of direct correlation and, and things that are said in this, in this thing. But when it comes down to what really stood out to me is, is the fact that it says that God has chosen me and that it's his love that holds everything together. Mm. Right? Because apart from him, we can do nothing. And separated from him means right. I was going to hell. But in his perfect love, it held together just long enough so that I would say yes to the free gift of salvation. And then this new life, as we see right in here, that, that it talks about what this new life should look like. Right? So there's a bunch. I'll let my wife because I can just keep going. Yeah, there is so much. I'm like, what, sh what do I want to share about? We only have so much time. And... Um, I love that too that that starts out with saying that God has chosen you God has chosen us and so there's purpose in that I'm not a forgettable person um, God of all creation sees me knows me and chose me um, and I see there down in um, the end of verse 15 it says it is for peace that you were chosen to be together in one body so God has chosen me and I'm so thankful for that to be his holy person because he loves me. 
and then it comes in with saying it is for peace that you were chosen and so to reconcile with others um, and i'm so thankful for the reconciliation that i have with god through christ um, I'm able then to then ask forgiveness from them. He's called me to be a peacemaker. And it's not just to go be a peacemaker, but he says there is blessing in that. And, um, and so I'm thankful for that truth. It says here the most important part of your, you might have already just talked about it, but the most important part of your new life is to love each other. Um, and it's, you know, it is love and it, as my husband I know said, holding everything together in perfect unity. Um, so there's, it's, this scripture is just so rich with encouragement. And uh, one other thought, you know, it says, you know, in verse um, 12, it goes on to say, so your new life should be like this. Folks, I'm so happy that God makes it really pretty dang clear <laughs> how I should live life today. Um, you know, when I came to know him, I'm like, Ugh, I know how to live life wrong. I know how to make really bad choices. I know how to be a drug addict. I know how to be an alcoholic. I know how to be a gambler. I know how to be in destructive relationships. Those are the things that I know how to do really well. Um, and so God, I, I like, you got to take over my life. And he's like, okay, here I am. I've chosen you. And I'm going to give you clear directions all along the way on how you should live life today. Carly, be a peacemaker. And it, I say it simply, but, you know, we can make it harder than it really needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't do this on our just trying really hard to um, go ask for forgiveness from everybody because, oh, that's what they said at most excellent way. So now I got to go and do it. You know, surrender to the Lord. First, we have to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, like my husband said. And then trust in God's timing. It's not a matter of check it all off the list. You know, oh, I did that one, that one, that one. And I've asked for forgiveness from everybody that I've wronged. And so now I'm good. That's not what God's saying here. So just trust in his timing in that. Be spirit led in that. Um, and, and it's great. And it says in verse 17 that everything you say and everything you do should be done for Jesus your Lord. So, you know, as we're doing those, as we're going to others and asking for forgiveness, and I need the Holy Spirit to help me to see the ways in which I've harmed others. Like, he, the Holy Spirit's got to help me with this. Um, but as I do that, I'm not just doing that, you know, for that person or for me, because there's a great weight that's lifted off of my shoulders as well as theirs, and the, that transaction of me going and asking for forgiveness. But I'm doing it for... I'm doing it for Jesus, who is the Lord of my life. And so I could go on. Um, there's so much more. You know, let the peace of Christ control my thinking. I need to think like Christ, not Carly, like we talked about at the beginning with Philippians 2.6. To, um, you know, think differently is important. So if I think like Carly, I'm not going to go out and ask for forgiveness from others. So it goes on to say that the Bible has so much to say about how our new life should look like as we walk in His Spirit. But it also says much about what the new life desires to show others as we let His Spirit guide us toward repentance and reconciliation with others. It's a supernatural thing to go to somebody who is prob would probably never in a million years think that you're going to come to them and ask for forgiveness. And so that really can invoke a question of why, like, why did you come after all this time? Or I thought you never even realized the harm that you caused me, right? That person could be thinking those things for however long. And, um, you know, so you're able to show Christ to them. But more than that, you can even share Christ out loud with them and share the gospel and um, share about what the gospel has done in your life. And that's why you're coming to them to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. You want to start Second Corinthians? Sure. And I'll read, you read half and I'll read half? Sure. That's great. But God who comforts the depressed comforted us by calling by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort which he was comforted in you. As he reported to us your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. For, through, for though I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I see that the letter caused you sorrow, through only, though only for a while. I now rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. Mm -hmm. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that you might not suffer loss in anything 
through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. For behold, what earnestness this very thing, this godly sorrow has produced in you, what vindication of yourself, for what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what avenging of wrong, in everything you demonstrated yourself to be innocent in the matter. I guess I'll just finish it then. Yes, please. Gosh, sorry. <laughs> so although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of the offender, nor for the sake of the one offended, but that your earnestness on our behalf might be made known to you in the sight of God. For this reason, we have been comforted. So even as we were, you know, talking before about, you know, reconciliation and, you know, as we look at going to others as we have, you know, uh, hurt people and asking them for forgiveness and you know as i was talking about you know me going to my dad and and the response wasn't you know like hey yay right it, but there was a need for godly sorrow and repentance on my part right because godly sorrow and repentance definitely looks like something something right so it's it's that longevity right i i like to tell people all the time so as a you know alcohol and drug abuse counselor i tell people hey the best I'm sorry you could ever do is not doing it again mm. right because in addiction we're prone to say I'm sorry and it's not that what we're reading about here this godly sorrow right which brings forth repentance and mourning right and you're deeply internally troubled by what you've done in addiction I would say to my dad and to my mom and to my siblings hey I'm sorry which really meant hey just shut up stop talking right i'm saying this so that you will shut up i'm sorry that it, i got caught yeah so there's a there's a huge difference right and so what we're talking about here this godly sorrow brings forth repentance repentance to salvation right so for those that do not know christ when they come to this godly sorrow which leads to repentance what leads to salvation it's saying hey God, I'm so sorry that I've wronged you, right? That I, I, I have hurt you, I have sinned against you, I, I am asking for forgiveness. I want you to come into my life and change and transform it, right? That's, that's what it's talking about right there. But folks, like, going to somebody and really truly meaning it does look like something. There, there is a point and, and we also need to know that People aren't necessarily going to just be like super happy in their responses sometimes and be okay with that and know that we did our part and just trust and live things out for God and, and let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit's going to do in that person's life. That's what I did with my dad and it ended well, right? Our relationship was good. I, I used to talk to my dad all the time on the phone. Time. But it did take time. Years. Yeah, mm -hmm. a couple years, you know. And but I, I learned that he was watching. Even though he was in Southern California, you know, through social media, through my siblings, through other things, he was watching. So it's it's it, yeah, that that's what I'm seeing in in that one. Well, the only other thing I could add to that um, for tonight is just with that sorrowful to the point of repentance, um, you know, and that godly sorrow versus the worldly sorrow, the worldly sorrow, it says here, produces death. Just thinking about, um, you know, we can be sorrowful and be sad um, and sorry that we've done something wrong to another person and we could beat ourselves up and we could stay in that. Right, we could stay stuck. We could say we we're a terrible person, or even think it, not saying it out loud, or not realizing we're putting that on our shoulders, but that we are this now quote unquote bad person. Um, but it's not a sorrow that stay, has us staying stuck in that. A spirit led sorrow that God convicts us of, uh, convicts us of through His Holy Spirit's help to say, "Hey, you said that in a certain way that you need to now go apologize or ask forgive, say sorry, and ask for forgiveness." to that person that you've harmed now. 
Um, it's that sorrow that leads to something, that action, like my husband said. And so um, I, I would say that's the only other thing I would add to that. And just knowing that we're all works in progress. And if they're a fellow believer, uh, they have the Holy Spirit in them. And, you know, even a fellow believer may need to say, I need some time, you know, and uh, just trust the Spirit of God, giving the Spirit of God something to do. Even in an unbeliever's heart, the Spirit of God is at work. God is never out of control. Um, and so, and, and knowing, like my husband said, um, somebody might not say they forgive you. And are you going to be okay with that? If you're truly surrendered, if this is a truly spirit-led uh, motivation behind your going to ask for forgiveness for that person, you're going to say, I get it. Like, I, 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 call it, I wreaked havoc in your life for a long time. And I've said sorry a ton. And I'm, okay, I'm going to... I understand you not being able to say sorry or um, that you forgive me today. Um, if it's on our own accord and our own power and we're just trying on our own and we're not truly saved or we're not truly surrendered, we're going to get frustrated, angry. We're going to say, oh, well, there's no point in this. I need to go to the bar, right? Um, so just that uh, is coming to mind as well. So there's a quote here for us to read with J.J. Mueller that says, There is no grace unless God bestows it. And there is no real peace unless it flows forth from God's reconciliation with sinful people. Then true reconciliation between people can take place. So it's only at that point, as I was saying, that we have come to be reconciled with God and it's His Holy Spirit prompting us to go ask for forgiveness um, then reconciliation can happen between myself and that person that I've harmed. And then also we have it going on to say a quote or a statement here that says, asking forgiveness from others is seldom easy. It is, but it is essential to a victorious life. Whether they actually do forgive us is not what brings the healing. It is the act of humility and desiring peace with every person that will be a big part of our victorious life. Then we'll, we will give the Spirit of God something to do in the other person's life. We can then trust God with the results and His timing as we seek to reconcile with others. And You know, as it says here, as we are desiring peace, we're, at, we're desiring to be at peace with others. God's instructed me to be reconciled to others. And so in obedience, I am desiring to be at peace with others. I think of Psalm 34 that says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The desire of my heart is I want to be obedient to the Lord's commands. The desire of my heart is he's called me to be a peacemaker, so I desire to be a peacemaker. So guess what? Psalm 37, 4 reminds me that he will grant that desire of my heart. Um, any other thoughts from you, my love? We're going to pray. Awesome. Well, yeah, it is that time of night, so we are going to close in prayer, and thank you all for being here. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time uh, to get into your word with, with folks. Lord, we're thankful. Yep. Uh, thankful for uh, reconciliation. Lord, thank you that you sent your son uh, to die on our behalf so that we can, um, by faith in him, be reconciled once and for all with you. Uh, Lord, as uh, you have desired for us to uh, make right our wrongs, uh, Lord, may we do so thoughtfully, considerate of others and in a way that uh, brings you honor and glory. Mm -hmm. Lord, with a heart uh, that is understanding, that is merciful and peaceful, um, Lord, may we be peacemakers amongst all men. Uh, Lord, we just ask this uh, to be done in, by your power and your strength because left to try to do this on our own, we will fail miserably. Mm -hmm. uh, so thankful, God, that we can depend on you, that we can count on you. Thank you for these folks. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a happy and safe 4th of July for those amen. of you that are going to celebrate here in America. We will be in bed by 8. We might celebrate New York time. Stay up till 9, uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Probably not. It Bye. won't be dark yet. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be asleep.